Our fourth speaker is Tony Dahlman. Choices. Choices, Tony Dahlman. I was standing in a bathroom with a ham sandwich and a disposable camera. All of a sudden, a man in a tuxedo spotted me. He knew what I was doing. And much to my surprise, he said, hey, you wanna take a picture of that ham sandwich with me on the changing table? Judging by the confused looks on your faces, I should probably explain. I was at a co-worker's wedding in Sioux Falls. The conversations with my co-workers had run dry, so I decided to make some entertainment of my own. I grabbed one of the disposable cameras sitting on all of the tables of the wedding reception, and I took a picture of the lone dinner roll ham sandwich lying there on the table. All of a sudden, I started taking pictures of the ham sandwich with my co-workers in a plant with the shirtless ring bearer on the dance floor. But probably the weirdest picture of them all was with the best man laying down on a changing table with a ham sandwich in the men's bathroom. I was so enamored with my ham sandwich photography that I, that I did not notice a change in behavior in one of my coworkers. I had had a crush on Carla for a while, but I didn't think it was a good idea to try and go out with someone you were working with. It seemed like Carla wanted to dance with me, but if this backfired, it would be a really awkward day at work on Monday. So I had to make a choice. Should I ask Carla to dance? Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and anybody who has had to make a choice in their life. Standing there on that dance floor in Sioux Falls, I went back to some of the big choices that I have made in my life. I think I started to play basketball because I was tall. Unfortunately, I lacked some of the other skills let's just say all of the other skills to be good at the game of basketball. During my fifth and sixth grade seasons, I had a career total of three points, one free throw and one glorious two foot shot from underneath the basket. But seventh grade meant that I would get to try out for the junior high team with my friends. But some of my other friends were trying out for the speech team. Now I know standing up in front of a room of people talking to people was really intriguing to me, and it might be for some of the people in this room, but I wasn't sure I was ready to give up the jock culture of basketball. I talked to my mom, and she said, well, I think you might have fun in, in public speaking. You've done well in public speaking 4-H, and I think you do well on the school team as well. After a few agonizing days, I decided to retire from the game of basketball with my career total of three points and join the speech team. Through my years in high school, I had several coaches who taught me how to organize a speech and hone my skills in the art of public speaking. Today, I have good communication skills that allowed me to write good papers in college and give compelling presentations at work because of the time I spent on the speech team. It is because I quit the basketball team and joined speech that I am the communicator that I am today. But standing on that dance floor in Sioux Falls, my mind went forward to college where I had another important decision. There was only one month left of my freshman year at the University of Minnesota, and I was staring at a piece of paper in my dorm room. I had to decide where I would be living next fall. I had had a pretty good first year at Minnesota, but I knew that I'd spend too much time sitting alone in my dorm room and something had to change. I could either move to a new dorm where I'd be living with some of my math major classmates and I felt that I could finally get into the social circles that I need. Or I could move to the fraternity up the street where I would be living with a group of young men who shared the agricultural backgrounds that I also had. I called up my dad. While he was an alumni member of Farmhouse Fraternity, he did not pressure me, but he told me many stories of the important relationships that he had gained while he was living in the house. After several agonizing days, I called up Farmhouse and told them that I was interested in pledging the fraternity. 
Two years later, I was elected chapter president. I learned more about leadership than I ever thought was possible. Today, these leadership skills have allowed me to lead national projects in my job and have allowed me to mentor others in the civic organizations that I have involved in. But most of all, I have a group of friends and brothers who have given me friendship and support so much more than I ever had in my boring freshman year at the University of Minnesota. Now, I don't want to sound like all of my decisions have been good. You only have to go back to the tractor I rolled going down a hill at the age of 16, completely totaling it, or the excessive amount of weight that I gained in my 20s. And even though I spent a lot of time moping around about these, major, these minor setbacks, I realized that it is not the setbacks but the good decision that make me who I am as a person. Do not dwell on your bad decisions, for it is your good decisions that make you who you are. Standing on that dance floor in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I waited for the appropriate upbeat power ballad, and I asked Carla to dance. I don't know if my choice of ham sandwich photography had any impact on my chances with Carla, but I do know my choice of asking Carla to dance led to a date a couple weeks later and asking her to marry me a couple of years after that. And marrying Carla is the most important decision I have ever made. Go out and make the important decisions that are going to define your life. For it is those good decisions and maybe a couple of ham sandwiches that are going to define who you are today. Mr. Contest Master.